Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Brandon, and this right here... My name is Josh. That's right, man. We are so excited that you are watching online with us. Man, we truly believe that God has you here on purpose, for a purpose, and man, we can't wait to see what God does in and through you. Uh, man, we believe that tonight is the best night of oh, the yeah. week, isn't that oh, right? Yeah. That's right, and we actually have some tips just for you to make this the best night of the week. That's right, tip number one, get some snacks. That's mm. right, if you host a watch party, you have a cooler, we gave you some snacks already, but if you haven't got the chance to come get a watch party pack, you have some snacks in your house. Brandon, what are some of your favorite snacks? Man, some of mine, I love L8. Mm. I love jalapeno cheddar Cheetos. Oh, come on mm. now, come mm. on. It's like I eat a couple and I can't stop. It's kind of the same thing with Grippos. I mean, I don't know. I love I, Grippos. I, yeah. I, I like food, I love snacking <laughs> around. Uh, but yeah, make sure you get your snacks. Uh, but also, man, talking about a watch party, make sure you hop in a watch party host a watch party we have watch party packs we would love for you to pick one of those up but number two what you need is a bible and journal that's right so you can have your bible on your phone you can take notes on your phone but i highly recommend that you get a bible you get a journal you mark it up you write in it man there's just something special about it there's right. something special about it whenever you mark up your bible and your journal it's just very personal i love doing it but like i said hey you have a phone Get out the YouVersion app for your Bible, get out your notes, and get ready and have your Bible and your journal. That's right. And the third and final tip to make youth the best night of the week is we need you and your friends. So go on and like, comment, text your best friend. Come on yeah, now, text your best friend. Get it out right Say, now. hey, join youth. Mm. Let's go, let's go. Make sure mm. you're sharing it because sharing is caring. That's right. But guys, I'm pumped for what we have in store tonight. Let's check it out. So y'all already know the rules, but let's go over the rules real quick. We're going to be playing a game of rock, paper, scissors, best out of five. So best three out of five. If you win three times, you are our winner. Now, if you do not win, that means that you get to spin our will. Unfortunate. That's right. You get to spin that, and we'll find out what you have to do. But y'all let us know in the comments who you think is going to win. Is it going to be my dude Jordan or my dude Caleb, here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Mm. Jordan, round one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, tie. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, two, one. Jordan, you get a little nervous? No, I'm not nervous at all. Two, one, here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, and with that win right there, that means Caleb is our winner. And Jordan, I'm so sorry, but you have to spill, spin our will, unfortunate. Caleb, congratulations. All right, here we go, spin it. Better Life Youth presents the all new Watch Party Pack. In this pack, you will find everything you need to host an amazing watch party. We have journals, candy, popcorn, drinks, and last but not least, a host guide. If you're a student, a team member, or a parent and you want to host a watch party, text watch party to the number on the screen now. 
A pack so fun, we give it two thumbs up. Limited, while supplies last. Not available in all 49 states other than Kentucky. May cause fires. Not responsible for any other use other than watch parties. Thank you all so much for joining us and now week four of Plot Twist. Man, what an amazing series. And if you all haven't had a chance to watch it, make sure you go back, check out the previous messages. Man, last week talking about worry, anxiety, uh, something very personal to me. And man, what an amazing message. But I truly believe that God has something in store for you today. As we're in week four, we're going to be wrapping it up with our biggest plot twist of all time. The biggest plot twist of all time. I'm super excited for it. But another thing that I'm super excited for is next week, we're going to be having Drum roll, please. Pastor Aaron Rayburn, that's right, from the Grayson campus. Cannot wait to hear him speak uh, into our lives next week. Uh, I know you all are excited for that as well, and we cannot wait for that. But today, like I said, we're going to be talking about the biggest plot twist of all time. The biggest plot twist of all time. I, I know that uh, you've watched movies like me where uh, something's going on and then, man, at the end there's a big plot twist. It's like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. There's no way. That's impossible. Well, today we're going to be talking about the biggest plot twist of all time. A situation that it seemed impossible. A situation that for you and for me is impossible. So we've talked about in this series that from the beginning of time in Genesis that God talks about how that what the enemy means for evil, he wants to take it and turn it for good. He wants to take it and put a plot twist on it. What was meant for evil, he wants to turn it for good. And today we're actually going to be in John chapter 19. We're going to be reading verses 17 and 18 here. And uh, this is the, the crucifixion of Jesus, where he is handed over. And it says here in verse 17, carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Like I said, this is where Jesus is crucified. This is where he is led, and before this, they, they had taken him, and they had set Barabbas free, and Jesus took Barabbas' place, and they take an innocent man, a perfect, blameless man, to be crucified on a cross. They take him there and to be killed. To be killed. They, they didn't understand that he was doing it as a sacrifice for them. He was doing it as a sacrifice for you and for me. But he was led to die on a cross. But then we're going to jump down here. Also in John chapter 19, and we're going to be in verses 40 through 42. And this is after Jesus' spirit had left him. And he had passed there on the cross. He had already had his side pierced as the blood and water flowed from him. And he took his final breaths. And he said those famous words, it is finished. And it's after all that took place that here in John chapter 19, verses 40 through 42, 
that said, taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid because it was Jewish day of preparation. And since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Once Jesus was taken down off the cross and they went to bury him in the garden, they went to bury him in a garden after he had been crucified. They had taken his body and they had wrapped it up in linens and went through all their customs and they took it to the tomb. Jesus had just said it, it is finished. Everything that went through their head was that it was finished, it was over, it was done. They didn't see a way, there was no way. They didn't understand it, they didn't get it. It didn't make sense that the, the savior of the world, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he was gone. And they took him to the garden. But even here, even at this place where the tomb was, even at the place where they took him to be buried, I believe that there's a, a plot twist even in that. I believe that there's a plot twist even in that, that there in the garden, if you remember in Genesis, back to Adam and Eve, the enemy comes in the garden and he brings sin and death to this world. He tempts them and they fall short and they fall into that temptation and they fall into that sin and that's where sin and death enters into the world. They're in the garden, but Jesus, but Jesus. And what Jesus did as his body was taken to the garden. See what the enemy meant for sin and death, Jesus went to the garden for salvation and eternal life. He went there to bring salvation and eternal life. The enemy came and he, to destroy. He came to bring sin and death, but Jesus went to the grave to bring salvation and eternal life. And it's like, well, what do you mean? Yes, he was a sacrifice, but what do you mean that he just went to the grave and that would bring the salvation and eternal life? But see, the story doesn't end there. The story doesn't end there. Here in chapter 20, we read in verse 1, it says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who loved, who Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. She was freaking out. I can only imagine what was going through her head, the chaos that was going through her mind. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside and he saw and he believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. 
Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. What a plot twist. He was just there. He was just there. What do you mean he's gone? It's impossible. What do you mean that he's gone? He's not there anymore. What do you mean that he was once dead, but are you saying that now he's alive? His, the strips of linen, they were laying there. Like, well, what do you mean? Like, how? It's impossible. There's no way. But there's something about Jesus that whenever there seems like there is no way, he makes a way. Whenever it seems like there is no way, he became the way for you and for me. He became that perfect sacrifice. He became the way so that we may live eternally with him. See, I want you to notice that they saw the strips of linen lying there. They saw the strips of linen that they had wrapped him up in. They saw it around his head. They saw all the linens lying there. And let's be real. You probably have some linens in your life too. See, the enemy thought that he was one, that he had won. That Jesus had died and his body was wrapped up and the linen sealed the deal. But if we're being real, we have some linens in our life as well. Some things that makes us feel like we are bound and that we are dead in our sin. But see, I want you to notice here that the linens were left behind and what the enemy meant to bind, Jesus came to break. What the enemy left or meant to bind you, to bind you up in that sin, to make you feel like you are dead in your sin and maybe you are dead in your sin and you don't know Jesus, but as Christians, maybe the enemy is wanting to make you feel as if you were bound to that sin, that you, you can, will never overcome it. But Jesus, but Jesus came and he rose up out of that grave so that it wouldn't bind you, but he would break the curse. He would break the sin. He would break the bondage so that you could leave your linens behind. But the enemy used a bind. Jesus broke. I want you to notice that so many times in our life, so many times in our life, we just accept what the enemy has filled us up with, that we're too far gone, that there is no way, that there is no hope, that there is no life, that it's over, and that it is finished. I want you to notice that that's not true. I want you to know that that's not true. I want you to know that your shame doesn't define you. Your guilt doesn't define you. Your past doesn't define you. Who you were is not who you are. Just because you've done something doesn't mean that you are something. Don't let the enemy define you one more moment but allow Jesus to define you, that you are loved, that you are cared about, that you are wonderfully made, and that you can be forgiven. But I want you to see here once again in John 20, verse eight, it said, finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. He saw and he believed. I want to ask you, do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus came, that he died, and that he rose again? 
Do you believe it? Do you believe that what the enemy meant for evil, God wants to turn it for good? Do you believe? Do you believe that what the enemy meant to destroy you, that Jesus wants to use to develop you? Do you believe? Do you believe that what the enemy wants to use to shame you, Jesus wants to use to tell your story? Do you believe? Do you believe that the, that the guilt that the enemy is filling you with, that that guilt that he is filling your mind and your heart and your soul with, that that guilt Jesus wants to use to give him glory? Do you believe? Do you believe that what the enemy meant for death, Jesus came to give eternal life? Do you believe in the greatest plot twist of all time that Jesus came, he died, but three days later, he rose again. Death and its sting couldn't hold him. He brought eternal life for you and for me. He died so that we may live. But do you believe? I'm going to ask everyone, if you would, go ahead and close your eyes, bow your heads. Whether you're by yourself or you're at a watch party or no matter what it looks like. Maybe you're watching this and it's your first time ever checking youth out. I just want to say, hey, thanks for joining us. Hey, keep watching us. We believe that God has you here on purpose, for a purpose. You're not here by mistake. And maybe you're, you're here, whether it is your first time or you've been watching for years. You've never given your life to Jesus. You never fully surrendered your life to Jesus. And if that's you and you want to give your life to Jesus today, if you want to give your life to him, I'm going to ask you to silently or out loud to say this prayer with me. Say, God, I'm sorry. I've blown it. God, I was dead in my sin. But Jesus, I believe that you came, I believe that you died, and I believe that you rose again. And today, I declare you as Lord of my life. Please forgive me. And if that's you, I believe that you were saved. I believe that scripture teaches us that you were saved. And I want you to know that, hey, I'm proud of you. I want you to know that, hey, I'm here for you. I want you to know the people in your watch party, they're there for you. The people in this youth ministry, we are here for you. You don't have to do life alone. I'm so proud of you. Maybe you're a follower of Jesus. Man, things have been tough. You've kind of fallen into the trap of sin and it seems like it's bound you. I want you to know, just like I talked about, what the enemy meant to bind you, Jesus came to break. Whatever sin, whatever struggle you're going through right now, I wanna encourage you to turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. He's not mad at you, he's mad about you. He's not disappointed in you. He wants to be there for you. Turn it over to Jesus. But guys, thank you so much for joining us week four of Plot Twist to learn about the greatest plot twist of all time. To what the enemy meant for death. Jesus came and gave eternal life. Love you all. I'll see you. Man, what an amazing message from Pastor 
Brandon, just straight gospel, the biggest plot twist, the greatest plot twist of all time. Now we're going to jump into a few questions. Just want to encourage you, just talk with your watch party. Uh, just be open, be open. So the first one is, do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Maybe you gave your life to him tonight. I want to encourage you, text the number on the screen. Text SAVED to the number on the screen. And I want to encourage you, take that next step and share it with your watch party. That's right, I'm believing that somebody watching this right now gave their life to Jesus. Or maybe you all just talked a little bit like, man, I've never thought of that before. But jumping into question two, what is your story? Or another way to ask it is, how has Jesus changed your life? Take the next few minutes and just discuss that with your watch party.
Maybe that was the first time some of you all have ever shared your story. I just want to say I'm proud of you. That's awesome. That takes so much courage. Your story is so powerful. But moving on to the next question, question number three is, how has Jesus taken something that the enemy has meant for evil and turned it for good? Take the next few minutes and discuss that with your friends. Man, that's so awesome. Maybe you, you're going through something right now and you really didn't know what to do. It's, you just need to trust God. Maybe you were encouraged by some of your friends. They, they share what was going, in, going on in their life and how Jesus took something that was evil and turned it for good. And this last and final question that we have for tonight is how can you show Jesus to someone this week? I want you to take the next few minutes and just share some ideas of how you can show Jesus this week.
Josh, what are you thinking right now? I don't even know, man. <laughs> hey, Jordan, you excited? I'm gonna name it Reggie. Reggie? Yeah. Reggie Miller? Uh -huh. Sure. Go get a hamster. There we go. Oh my gosh, look at the female teddy bear hamster. It's it's got the one. male teddy bear. It's the one. Look at oh it. my like gosh, look at Reggie right there. What's up, buddy? Oh, Camera shot. Oh, man. You should get two and start a Is that the one, bro? That might be the one, I guess. That's the one? Oh, me? Oh, You're talking about me? That's so cute. Oh, man. You gotta do it. Reggie. <laughs> Look at that one. He <laughs> <laughs> said, what about me? I do tricks. All right, bro, which one is it? I guess that gray one over there. <gasps> All right, there's his hamster. Reggie. And Jordan now has a hamster. All right, how amazing was game time? Jordan has to own a hamster. How funny is that? And maybe you were watching in a watch party or maybe you're not in a watch party yet. We have packs ready for you. So text the number on the screen and we will get you in a watch party. That's right. And we know that you all love worship, but we think worship should be out through the week. So we have created a Spotify playlist just for you all. Make sure you scan the QR code on the screen and you can go straight to that. You don't want to miss that or what we have next week. So we will see you right back here for youth next week. That's right. We'll see you guys.